Дорогие друзья и слушатели нашего онлайн лектория, я с радостью представляю вам наш I'm pleased to introduce to you our next guest of the Ocean Lecture Hall, Ivan Gorlov, an archaeologist from the Marine Research Center of Moscow State University, scientific secretary of the Commission on River, Sea and Underwater Heritage of the Moscow Regional Branch of the Russian Geographical Society, with the topic of his lecture, why an archaeologist needs a scuba tank and where to look for Atlantis. Indeed, Ivan, where and why? You have the floor. Hello, dear listeners. I'm going to uh, switch off the video to, uh, for the better quality, and we will start. Today's lecture is uh, dedicated to the science between the archaeology and ocean, underwater archaeology. What does it do? So, uh, it is archaeology is the science of material traces. Its task consists of recovering events and human lifestyle in the past based on material vestiges or material traces. Characteristics of the object define methods and working conditions of the archaeological work. Archaeologist needs to uh, base himself on the fact and on the material traces. He uh, works as a detective and um, recovering the past. The scientists work with vestiges under the sea. Despite the methodology, which is common with the archaeology, underwater archaeology is a special science, a separate one. Humanity faced face a lot of challenges in the past. So to do better in future, we need to understand the past first. Our planet is not stable. Humanity has been adapting to changing life conditions. Climate relief, fauna and flora kept changing. New living spaces appeared and disappeared. In a short period of time, living practices were destroyed. It is well known that humanity has grown on the banks of rivers, seas and oceans. Water resources were the source of water and food, protected from the enemy, provoked catastrophes, controlled population patterns and created obstacles. During the life of the Homo, Earth's climate and landscape has changed a number of times. The reason for that uh, are glacia uh, glaciations. Ice concentration in the ice sheet exposed huge parts of the shelf. Big grassy tundras were populated by megafauna, neighbors of our ancestors. You can see the uh, uh, the, the parts of the relief that were uh, soil, they are marked with, with uh, the red color. During the strongest glaciation, the sea retreated to the 135 meter depth compared to today's level, but we cannot mechanically determine the depth of a random point on Earth. Ice changes were accompanied by earth crust movements provoked by heavy, uh, heavy ice caps. Local events like landslides, earthquakes, tsunamis also contributed. Some near-polar territories literally melted because they were founded on fossil ice and sediments. In this territory, there were grass, grassy tundras, there were mammoths and uh, maybe hunters that were hunting those mammoths. In the historical times when Sumer cities were founded in Mesopotamia, people back then witnessed events that were described in the Zeosudra epic, literature about Sumer version of Noah. While in the this, uh, this central Anatolia, Chatal Hyuk uh, reigned, and long time after the construction to Gebekli Tepe, a big Sturega landslide provoked a tsunami that scorched flourishing valleys of Dogger land from the earth. Humans of that time witnessed the Baltic Sea formation. We don't know who used the scuba set first. It was probably a log or an inflated animal skin, but the dugouts that were found and rock paintings suggest that 10 or 12,000 years ago, humans used boats for navigation and fishing. First of all, the, uh, the, uh, it was some dugouts or uh, some kinds of canoe. Uh, unfortunately, 
they were not kept to, uh, to this day and we cannot uh, study them. So we can only base our uh, findings on rock paintings. Navigation was, has always been a risky business. From antique literature, we know that Anarchasis uh, uh, answered, what category do we put navigating humans? To the living ones or to the dead ones? Sailors were dying because of the cruel streams driven by wind alone in the sea. Sea battles made many boats sink. All those traces are kept as witnesses in the seafloor. So far, more than three million boats are resting in the seafloor. And many of them sank in minutes and became a mere reflection of life on board. The diving fever that helped define underwater archaeology started on the 4th of April 900, uh, 1900, thanks to the Greek sponge hunters near Antikythera Islands. This boat gave us the biggest collection of bronze antique sculptures, a unique sample of the technical genius, Antikythera mechanism, an astronomical calculator manufactured in 87 BC. It was determined that material constructions, date and type of the fright are the same than in the ships in which Roman dictate, uh, dictator Sulla brought art objects plundered in Greece to Rome. Later, it was confirmed that Sulla had lost one of the ships near Antikythera. Curiously enough, a couple of years ago, before the discovery, Mentor, the ship of the Earl of Elgin, who collected antique objects, has wrecked nearby. Menta followed to England and carried art objects, but when it was hurtled against the rock of Antikythera. The majority of objects and the crew were salvaged thanks to the sponge hunters who dived into the icy waters. These coincidences uh, for that uh, first uh, area and with the first shipwreck made scientists think about about some dangerous parts for navigation. That's why victims of the shipwrecks are to be searched for there. We cannot say that Antikythera excavation were the first attempt to get relics from the water. People have always knew about the treasures lying under the waters. Diver is one of the oldest professions. The first of them were people living on the shores. Archaeological uh, uh, recordings say that more than 4,000 uh, years, uh, people like this lived at the territory of today's Israel. Military diver is a, a, a special profession. These people were very well prepared. They could decide the course of a whole battle. That's how Scylias and his daughter Hidna decided the course of the Greco-Persian war, cutting the mooring of the Xerxes ship. In the Roman Empire, military divers had skin costumes similar to today's host cubit sets. But after the fall of the empire, the art was gone. For, my, for a long time. For example, a special, uh, a special type of, was a special profession in the Roman Empire, who was dealing especially with the anchor. Sponge hunters played all with the second fiddle. They, uh, the technique is the same. You can see the huge rock that uh, the diver took in one hand and holding his breath, dived for five minutes. Professional uh, could hold their breath for 17 minutes. They used to cut their eardrums to save the effort and time while diving. Years before Antikythera, one of the underwater exploration was carried out by Vladimir Chernyavsky. 
who hired Travis to help him map the sediments on the seafloor of the Suhuma Bay. The director of the Feodosia Relics Museum, Ludwig Kohli, analyzed the Feodosia Bay sea floor using the help of professional drivers in 1905. Antikythera excavation, however, looked more like a robbery and it had a great damage because divers took all the uh, only expensive uh, objects and nobody cared about the placement or preservation of artifacts. Some everyday objects, for example. A number of expeditions after uh, five, uh, 50 years were necessary to determine the uh, whole shipwreck situation. It looked a lot like another similar wreckage near Magdia in 1907. The main difference was their organization. The organization was, uh, was much better than in Antikythera, but the works were complicated because the archaeologist was uh, still on the ship and uh, not on land. So the divers were not well prepared and sometimes could not um, identify an object. For example, they couldn't uh, recognize Parthenon parts. They took them for, uh, for a, a big rock. So this complicated the process a lot. So the uh, studies left, allowed, uh, to offer, allowed um, Alfred Merlin to determine that uh, the ship was indeed the Sulu's ship. We need to say that it was a, a big ship, it was 40 meters long. On its deck, uh, there were six files of columns. So it was transporting a, a decomposed cathedral from Rome, basically. In 1909, uh, very interesting works were carried out on the Loch Ness Lake. The Krenner crests were discovered. They were very similar to the rests found on the Zurich Lake in Switzerland. An interesting case is uh, name excavations. The, uh, it was known that the rest of the boat lied on the seafloor. For uh, 500 years, people have been trying to get them, to leave them, which only damaged the excavation site. When Mussolini came to power, the excavation process got political and costly, but was done anyway. For investigation purposes, the water was pumped out of the lake and the boats were placed into a museum. Unfortunately, in 1944, that museum was burnt during the German Eunice retreat. And it's still unclear what was the reason of the uh, burning. One of the pioneers of the underwater archaeology, whose idea defined the development of the underwater archaeology, uh, Ruben Orbelli. He was one of the first in the world. Uh, he emphasized the importance of teaching professional underwater archaeologists. Orbelli organized the Chersonese Olbia bug dugout exploration. It is clear from the early history that technical problems limited the possibilities of moving and working underwater. Because there was not a lot of cases. That's why uh, Otto Blundell works are really interesting when he um, dived himself with the special costumes. So the absence of such costumes made the exploration imp uh, impossible. Big silt uh, masses were staying on the illuminators and becoming an obstacle for, for a diver. The situation changed when uh, Cousteau and Gagnan invited the scuba set. Excuse me. 
autonomous underwater sets existed before. Jenry Fluss's famous rebreathers were used by English divers from the end of the 19th century. It was a, a big bag with a high uh, potassium hydroxide, hydroxide and, uh, uh, and oxygen. But rebreathers were uh, not uh, usable on depths and were hardly, uh, hard, uh, hard to maneuver because they required manual air control and they didn't give the needed autonomy. But they uh, used the, the uh, respiration mask the first. So the scuba set gi really gives to the diver more freedom and convenience. First works, even though unsuccessful, were carried out in 1948 during the Car uh, Carthage excavation. French pilots uh, got it wrong. They mistook seal strips for ancient murals. Speaking about the milestones, we cannot ignore the Heliodonia Cape Wreck. First, because this is the uh, one of the one of the oldest uh, wrecked sailing vessels known to us. Secondly, we can say that uh, it allowed uh, uh, father founders of Mediterranean underwater exploration to uh, to appear. Uh, George Bass, who wrote a, a book about it, Honor Frost, one of the first women, John Duplat Taylor, and other and others. This is was the first uh, time when it was decided to teach uh, to teach professional uh, archaeologists to become divers. During the the whole uh, uh, work, no almost no accidents occur. There was only one uh, small lesion. So the decisions that were made during the organization and the excavation have become working standards for many years. The whole process is uh, covered in detail in Bass's book, Underwater Archaeology, that I can recommend you to read on your own. George uh, Bass, uh, some years after that, with uh, the help of uh, sponge hunters that are always present, that really help every, uh, all the time, another shipwreck was discovered that uh, must be mentioned. This uh, case allowed to uh, completely change the uh, geography of the commercial routes. Do you hear me? Is there any technical problem? Ivan, it's fine, we hear you. Sometimes we have some cuts, but we hear you. Uh, Kash uh, Cape sh uh, shipwreck uh, goes back to 16th century. Uh, uh, golden artifacts, uh, very precious ones were uh, found. Amber, ingots of different uh, precious ma uh, materials, ceramics and uh, other um, and other really expensive materials were found. The replica, uh, the replica of the boat was uh, constructed and it allowed to construct a whole uh, museum complex. Then uh, the replica was flooded artificially and uh, now it's uh, an underwater park. Classical sense, there is uh, no uh, historical layer and that's why we have uh, the complex of uh, shipwreck when the uh, events actually are reconstructed uh, dependent on the uh, position of other uh, 
ships, uh, which actually sunk in the same uh, conditions. Uh, and sometimes they were uh, the reasons for mistakes uh, for underwater uh, excavations when we had different uh, complexes, different ships of different eras. So we can just dis uh, decide what uh, the ship looked like uh, depending on its uh, on what it contained actually. The underwater monument have extremely uh, important information. So this is just uh, the presentation of a ship. Uh, you see uh, that there is a special layer uh, which uh, saved uh, the, the trade products and many of these uh, foundings you can actually uh, see them uh, in Turkey in a museum. The underwater monuments have extremely important information. First of all, they attest to uh, very old uh, activities of uh, people. Second, uh, these uh, uh, cities actually contain the life. And any of these findings actually allow us to see, uh, to learn more about the past. Because on the land, we uh, usually uh, deal with some burials or, or some pyramids, etc. Thirdly, uh, this uh, environment allowed allows to um, preserve the organic materials. Fourthly, we have uh, uh, truly few information about uh, uh, the construction of these ships. Uh, on the one hand, uh, uh, these were the secrets uh, of people so who built the ships. But on the other hand, uh, these uh, uh, ships were pretty ordinary. One way or another, we know a little about the construction of the ships. We know it just uh, thanks to the archaeology. The development of uh, uh, a scuba dive uh, allowed us, uh, allowed uh, not only uh, great opportunities to historians, but also to the looters. And uh, the situation uh, actually got worse uh, because of some um, uh, magnetometers, uh, sound, uh, eco sounders, uh, uh, and other equipment. All of that led to the necessity to accept uh, an international standard. All of, and it uh, culminated uh, in signing a convention, a UNESCO convention in 2001. It gives the, the definition of uh, the underwater heritage and builds the principles for its studying. For example, among these principles are the need uh, to preserve the uh, underwater uh, heritage, uh, the preservation of in situ, uh, because if we don't do it, so we lose a lot of context necessary for the exploration. Also, the refusal uh, to commercially exploit uh, these findings. So, again, the refusal to commercially use uh, uh, these things. Uh, and also, it builds the principles of teaching and exchange of information. Uh, let's briefly speak about the different categories of underwater ca uh, heritage, because it has different types. But at the same time, there are some basic principles of studying underwater objects. Uh, among them are the uh, sunken um, transport, it includes uh, the ships, it includes the uh, airplanes. After uh, the development uh, and discovery of planes, there are more and more planes underwater, and probably they will be, uh, they will consist major part of uh, the this heritage. Uh, Next, it's the sunken towns, uh, which happen to be there because uh, of uh, uh, some uh, collapses, some calamities and catastrophes. 
they might also be uh, become underwater thanks to the uh, efforts of men. Uh, also, another category is the sunken infrastructure. It includes the military infrastructure, say, uh, uh, some uh, special equipment uh, for not letting the ships uh, in the base. And uh, another uh, category is the sunken paleo landscapes. Another category is uh, sunken caves, because they have Uh, great specifics and peculiarities uh, in studying, and they require special training. Moreover, their uh, search and localization is much more expensive compared uh, to the exploration of the sunken landscapes. We also have a, a new uh, scientific science intensive. Uh, uh, science, it's uh, archaeology, uh, archaeological oceanography. Mostly, it concerns uh, the depth uh, when a person, a human, cannot explore. This area allows us uh, to find uh, great findings. For example, one of the ancient, uh, most ancient ship. Uh, it's uh, not uh, uh, 3,000 years old, but still it's very well conserved. It's uh, uh, situated uh, very deep. It's uh, found uh, at 2,000 meters. Uh, it's in the Black Sea. And we can use, we can actually explore it only for distance, uh, well, indirect methods of study. Going back to the changes uh, uh, that happened uh, with our planet, there were some uh, times of cooling, and they are called the cooling eras. Uh, they are, consist of uh, ice uh, ages, uh, and they have some cooling periods and warming periods. After uh, humanity left Africa, there were uh, eight of these periods. And this is a great incentive for humans to move. As I've already told you, humanity was, uh, human life was uh, connected to the, uh, to the waters and the water resources. Great regions uh, were covered by the sea uh, due to the tectonic plates movements. Uh, it includes um, Togoland and Berendia, Ahotia, Nipanida. Uh, these are real, not mythical Atlantises. More than 10,000 years ago, La Manche, the English Channel, was a great river, uh, uh, which is now the Doge Band. Archaeology uh, shows us that Doge Bank is uh, the uh, remains of an inhabited island which was uh, and, uh, well, which appeared and emerged uh, together with the Britannic Islands. And uh, after that, a great uh, calamity led to the destruction of that. So, and it happened due to the uh, ice melting. About 11,000 years ago, the Bering Sea covered the uh, bridge which existed uh, from 28,000 years ago. The Bering um, Bridge uh, actually appeared uh, before that too, and it uh, allowed to exchange, uh, uh, exchange between uh, Asia and America. Uh, due to uh, some harsh conditions, uh, it's not always possible to explore this uh, place. But the archaeology shows us that about 20,000 years ago, the humans tried to cross Bering, uh, Beringia. The last uh, uh, findings allowed us to understand that Beringia 
was established far uh, before, even uh, 30,000 years ago. Uh, speaking about the uh, region of Akotia, there are quite a lot of questions related to that. Unfortunately, we can't actually find a good picture of that. I hope you can see. So this is the part of the shelf. Uh, used to be land. It was uh, sunken in the previous cooling periods. And also was a land at some point. Most of the parts of the uh, seabed uh, have uh, a thicker crust and it uh, differs it from the uh, sea crust. Nipponida was uh, uh, subject to some tectonic changes uh, which led to the sinking of this part. The monuments of Duktai culture in the eastern Siberia allow us to speak uh, more confidently about the movement of uh, ancient people and about uh, the changes in the southern border. It's very probable that uh, the humans actually crossed the, the territory of Akotia. The findings uh, on the Japanese islands allow us to say that uh, Nipponida uh, was uh, inhabited at that time. Nipponida was situated uh, between the uh, modern uh, Japan and the Korean Peninsula. It's uh, a pretty small part of land compared to Beringia or Akotia, but it allowed people to go to Japan and to inhabit this land. We also ex wait for the exploration of Sunda or Sunda land, which is situated in the Southeast Asia. The uh, today's uh, peoples of Venida and the inhabitants of Andaman Islands uh, are uh, the um, uh, well, the uh, the people who proceeded from the uh, astroloids, and uh, these people. Well, we have a lot of to learn from them because they uh, even felt that uh, the tsunami was coming in two thousand and four. There was also some uh, some findings showing that there were people uh, in uh, Java and in Bali. But uh, now it's impossible because people couldn't, cannot uh, get there by land. Due to the volcanoes, Sunda uh, has a, a very wide biodiversity. The migration of people uh, went through uh, the India and and they started to uh, cover Sunda uh, 40,000 years ago. And it uh, left uh, some chains of islands. It's interesting that about 5,000 years ago, we see the first uh, uh, towns of Schumers, according to which the uh, cradle of humanity is uh, in Asia. It's, uh, it shows that the Shumer culture actually uh, is uh, very similar to the rice uh, uh, culture uh, in Indonesia. Here are the um, great changes in human uh, development took place too. Sunda was between uh, Asia and Australia. It was impossible for Homo erectus to cross it. 
great lands in Australia, which happened about 40,000 years ago, used to be lands. So the first inhabitants uh, initially uh, were in uh, Sahula and then they reached Tasmania. Thanks to the uh, very developed uh, school, uh, Australian School of Underwater Archaeology, we have uh, great results uh, about Sunda. We found the remains of uh, uh, fishing infrastructure, uh, for example, the kitchen uh, middens. Uh, so these kitchen middens, uh, well, consist uh, of uh, fish bones, uh, of mussels, uh, which were eaten uh, by, the, uh, by ancient people. Well, and they are now dated back to eight to seven thousand years ago, uh, and uh, hopefully we will get some more ancient results right now. We can't ignore uh, the site uh, near Israel, which is called Etlit Yam. Etlit Yam is uh, one of the uh, very well conservated uh, prehistorical village which belonged to people who uh, hunted uh, mussels and fish. Uh, the skulls uh, which were discovered had uh, bone, um, per, uh, bone spurs uh, which are very uh, typical of uh, professional divers. And uh, they, there were also uh, some wee whales, uh, which allow us to believe that uh, they grew, grew and exchange crops. The modern underwater archaeology uh, uses the information um, of other sciences, for example, the acoustics and geophysics. Robot, uh, robot uh, techniques allow us to uh, reach places which are impossible for men to reach. Paleogenetics uh, uh, and the sciences about the analysis of uh, um, instances allow analysis. us to uh, analyze uh, the whole complex uh, of information which is uh, um, excavated by the archaeologists. We also cooperate with some other specialists from uh, studying the ocean. We have to cooperate with paleogenetics, with palo. Uh, with with glaciologists, we need to uh, cooperate with everybody who is connected with the ocean to study this uh, age of paleolithic and to and what we can use as a basis are facts and as more facts as we uh, we can get, the more uh, we can uh, say about the past lives. Uh, moreover. The today's uh, uh, sciences about the Atlanticists require bright young people. Here you can see the plan uh, of the Atlitium. So Atlitium is the biggest one, but it's not the only one. For now, we know more than 2,000 uh, sites of prehistoric uh, prehistorical sites uh, in water, but this problem was uh, uh, very closely studied uh, uh, re relatively recently. Among the mon monuments that I haven't mentioned before, but we should uh, speak about, is Pablo Petri. It's one of the uh, most uh, um, famous uh, sunken city, and it belongs to the Bronze Age. Uh, so these Pablo Petri ruins uh, uh, were known by ancient Greeks. And the city has a, a very intricate system of uh, uh, streets, which was untypical. So this is my main presentation. If I have uh, 10 to 15 minutes, I can speak about the main stages of studying of the underwater 
heritage. So this uh, uh, stage, uh, so every excavation starts with the exploration. So first, we use uh, the scuba sets or special equipment. We identify the uh, sites of interest. Uh, we confirm that there are some artifacts there and we start the excavation. So between the exploration, excavation, uh, so this period can take uh, tens of years, decades. So we know that we'd be, uh, we'll be able to preserve this object because the excavation of Antikythera ex excavations, uh, we consider them as robbery because if uh, uh, maybe uh, to scientists of the future, our excavations uh, will uh, look the same way. After they are, uh, after that, they are registered, described, inventored. Uh, we uh, make the mapping, uh, all the sampling, and the objects are pre-conserved and restored. They are uh, uh, they are put into museums. The context is described, the expositions uh, are put in place uh, to be able to see the infrastructure, for example. So the public uh, is able to uh, see the actual artifacts. At this slide, uh, uh, I am showing the, uh, uh, the diving research, the uh, uh, territory is divided with uh, ropes. Sometimes these limitations are uh, firm. Sometimes uh, the streams are, are getting into way. Uh, with, uh, so scientists try to uh, register all the objects and put them into the map. In case when the um, the previous technique is not applicable. Uh, the load is thrown into the water and the diver uh, uses uh, this uh, load to uh, go underwater and then the load is, uh, rip uh, is placed to another spot and it continues like this. Another uh, stage of uh, underwater works is uh, fixation and mapping. Uh, without mapping of uh, all the artifacts, uh, about the fi uh, fix uh, without the fixating the placement of the objects, we cannot get the useful information from uh, these artifacts. Uh, hydrolocation is the most uh, useful uh, techniques be uh, because it is not uh, very expensive and it helps us to get the maximum inf information. So the acoustical beam is reflected from the surface and uh, we get the image. Thanks to the to modern acoustics, uh, this image repeats almost exactly the placement of the objects in the seafloor. The uh, expert who works with hydrolocation uh, needs uh, to be a professional one because uh, sometimes the image is um, um, is changed by the stream or something like that. Then the uh, multi-beam echo sound survey uh, is also applied. So this technique allows us to uh, build the digital image of the seafloor. Seafloor uh, profiliograph helps us to uh, uh, transform 
the image from the multi beam echo sounder survey, uh, echo sounder. Magnetic measures are also used in uh, other uh, other spheres and uh, proved to be quite useful. Photogrammetry is something that uh, has been used quite early during the first uh, excavations. So it's just, uh, computer photogrammetry allows us uh, using a number of images uh, create a detailed map of all the objects. So the, if the water is not clean, photogrammetry is uh, also applicable and this is its advantage. Sometimes it's the only way to get the image, apart from the acoustical ways. This is one of the examples of the image created uh, during the work of our team, Kijanka site. This is a boat that we found uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the lake. The uh, water is completely uh, is full of silt, but uh, we still uh, managed to get the idea of its dimensions and the placement of its parts. The special soil uh, works are uh, carried out uh, with a sp special pump. Sometimes it's called dredge in English. Uh, in English. It is used uh, to uh, lift the uh, heavy objects from the floor. So it uses the difference of uh, uh, the difference of uh, a temperature uh, with, uh, inside and outside. After the object is uh, our, um, object is described, uh, lifted. Uh, uh, so the, the lifting is part is quite difficult. A diver can uh, lift uh, three or uh, an object if it's not very heavy. But for uh, to lift a more hev uh, a heavier. Uh, but we need, uh, need some parachutes or uh, some uh, special equipment that are placed on a uh, board. If an object is fragile or small, sometimes a, small, uh, a carcass is created around the object previously. And then when it's lifted, we uh, can transport it uh, safely. To the play, to the museum or to the laboratory. An important uh, stage is a conservation preservation of the artifacts. Here you see uh, the costume that was uh, lifted by the um, experts of the Russian Geographical Society, and after. Uh, you see that the costume looks almost untouched by the time. It, it was the completely different level of uh, conservation. We reconstructed it ourselves. Wooden uh, artifacts are... Uh, um, they need to... Uh, uh, be desalinized, so all the salts need to be uh, destru uh, destructed, and all uh, other chemical uh, structures that are uh, damaging to the wood, they are, need to be washed out. So the, pro uh, the object that uh, should stay on the, uh, on the seafloor they must be protected from the robbers. That's uh, why uh, sp uh, special strains are put in place, uh, metal protection, because uh, 
curious divers can see it, but they cannot touch it. So these objects, to be, um, they can be available to the public if they are put into some underwater park. This is a combination of uh, an underwater monument. If um, if it's modified in a due way and duly prepared for being exposed, sometimes uh, relics are put in place if the object is uh, too fragile. But relics are done really exactly in the same way, like they used to be uh, constructed. So the coastal infrastructure is um, is con uh, is made. Some routes, uh, special routes for the visitors. Before I showed uh, uh, how one boat lifting. So this boat was uh, put in a small a special anger, specifically bought, um, constructed for it. And uh, scientists are now studying it in a small basin, in a closed anger, and not underwater. Uh, this is the list of the uh, biggest uh, 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 museums in uh, Boardroom, in Stockholm, in Portsmouth, Kibbutz uh, Museum, Nachshalim is quite interesting, and Playa Bonita Museum. In Russia, we also have a lot of um, museums. The first uh, museum uh, uh, became a part of uh, the research center, but uh, it's still situated in Feodosia, and you can still uh, visit it. Uh, the Fanagoria Museum is uh, still open. It uh, has an underwater part and the on land part. One of the museums that uh, uh, wants to be considered as underwater museum is uh, uh, Kronstadt um, History Museum. A big collection uh, is placed uh, into the uh, museum in Wiborg. Personas uh, is uh, very interesting too. Uh, Sudak Fort that I already mentioned and uh, Eastern uh, Crimea Historical Museum. Uh, so I'm sorry, if you would like to uh, know more about underwater archaeology, you can do a master program in uh, Sebastopol State University. Marine archaeology is the name of the specialization. Or you can join one of the expedition. Uh, from the Hermitage uh, expedition in Smolensk region in, Sur in the Surte River. Uh, Arkinske expedition, Patreyske expedition, uh, which is uh, near the uh, expedition in Fanagoria and in Tavria. Thank you very much. I would love to answer your questions. Ivan, thank you very much for uh, your presentation and for this lecture. Your profession is really inspiring and our young listeners today, they still have things to study, things to investigate, that there are a lot, there's a lot of work. D did I understand it right? Yes, you are completely correct. Excuse me, we have a small cut. Yes. Yeah, there is a lot of uh, work to do yet for many, many years because uh, something is going to sink again and our profession will exist uh, maybe forever. 
I remind our list, our young listeners, and uh, to the to those who listen to our uh, lecture, that this lecture is going to be uh, uh, recorded, so you can access it on our page, and you can uh, send you uh, us our feedback. You can send your questions and we will uh, pass them to Ivan. Ivan, thank you very much again for this inspirational lecture and see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. We have a five minute break and uh, we are going to listen to another lecture.